Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinars on uh, virtual training on the SDG 241 indicator. My name is uh, Stefania Bacci. I am Italian and I am a statistician working in the statistics division of FAO since uh, 2008. I started working in the SDG 241 team in early 2020. Uh, since last year, uh, we are organizing virtual trainings on the SDG 241 methodology to help countries gain a clear understanding of this complex indicator. We generally group different countries by region with about 100 participants per training, but today we have organized specifically this training for Bangladesh, and it will include um, theoretical parts, but especially practical sessions on, and exercises on SPEDA, built on your pilot test data. So again, welcome to this special training. So before starting, let me thank our colleague uh, Amirul from the FAO Bangladesh office for having coordinated the, the organization of this training. I leave now the floor to our Bab Aspandiar Khan, who is the key person for this training, for the official welcome address. Aspandiar, you have the floor. Thank you, Stefania. Can you confirm if you can hear me well? Yes. Okay, so good, good afternoon, uh, everyone, uh, and a very warm welcome to you on this first day of the virtual training on SDG Indicator 2.4.1. For this training, we are expected to be joined by more than 20 uh, colleagues from Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. Um, let me emphasize that we have collaborated with, uh, with Bangladesh on this indicator uh, since, uh, since 2015. So it is a uh, it is a close partnership that we are having with, uh, with the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. Just to uh, name a few instances whereby Bangladesh collaborated with FAO on this indicator. So Bangladesh was the country who were involved in the inception discussions around the methodology uh, while we were conceiving as to how the framework of this indicator will look like. And I'm glad that Amirul Islam was, uh, was the person who uh, uh, collaborated and contributed to that phase of the, that phase of the discussion. Um, so we organized desk assessments in Bangladesh back in 2016 and 17. Then we carried out cognitive testing in Bangladesh of the survey questionnaire that we have developed for SCG indicator 2.4.1 back in 2017. Uh, we then organized field tests in Bangladesh. Um, and in fact, um, uh, we went to uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, bilaterally to train the uh, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics staff before uh, us administering the field test. And I believe Gianluigi was, uh, was, uh, was the person who, who, um, who visited the BBS uh, back in uh, 2017 and 18. Um, so apart from all these instances whereby Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics was thoroughly involved at different stages of the conceptual methodological data collection aspects of the indicator. So I'm, I'm very excited to have the Bangladesh once again uh, taking keen interest in uh, adoption and implementation of SCG indicator 2.4.1, which, which is a very positive sign. Um, my name is Arbab Asfandiar Khan, and I work as an economist with, uh, with Statistics Division of FAO at its headquarters in, uh, in Rome. And I'll be um, your resource person along with uh, John Luigi, Nico, and uh, with Stefania Bacci uh, for this four days uh, virtual training. Um, Stefania is, uh, is the one behind making um, the organizational arrangements along with Amirul Islam. And uh, Stefania as well will be uh, playing a key role of facilitator and moderator during the course of these next four days. Uh, Gianluigi led the, led the analysis uh, of the field tests in Bangladesh that were carried out in 2018 and 19. And from tomorrow, he will walk us through the framework of SDG 241 as to how we go about data collection, how then we you know, use that data to analyze it and then uh, uh, construct the respective 11 sub-indicators of SG241 and finally the, the aggregate indicator. So with this brief introduction, 
Um, let, me, uh, let me reiterate that this training will be interactive. So you can stop us anywhere where you know where you 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 want to seek more clarity, and uh, we will in gradually in a phase manner cover the different aspects of the indicator. So with expectation of uh, of uh, active uh, participation and engaged discussion, um, you know I, I I now open open this training. So Stefania, the floor is yours. You may want to you know uh, walk the participant uh, through some housekeeping rules. Okay, thank you, Aspanjar, for this uh, introductory speech. Uh, let me now tell you a few instructions. So you know that this training has been organized in a webinar mode. So for the panelists, please uh, uh, follow the meeting in mute mode and click the unmute button only when you are given the floor. For the other participants, you don't have the possibility to unmute uh, or to turn on the camera, but the host can allow you to do it. So if you want to talk, please simply ask for the floor and we will allow you to unmute yourself. Uh, both panelists and participants at any time during the webinar, you have the opportunity to submit uh, your questions to the presenters. So to do so, just type your question into the Q&A section. Uh, please do not use the, the chat box. You can also raise the hand virtually for requesting the floor. So just look for the raise hand function. You will have the icon in the bottom bar or you can find in the participants menu. Uh, finally, whatever issue you have, please write me. You can use the chat and I will be happy to help you for any kind of doubts or questions or any technical matter, matters you might have. So before starting, let me also say that the link of the recordings of the entire virtual training will be shared with you. Uh, we will be sharing after the four days. And we will be also sending the, the certificates uh, to all the participants that will attend the entire training. We have already shared in advance part of the PowerPoint presentation, but we will share with you again also after the four days and together pro with many other supporting uh, documents. So now I would like to uh, share the um, agenda with you. So let me stop the video and let me, so, uh, so the agenda. Okay. So you should be able to see the agenda. Can you confirm? Can you see the agenda? Yes, Stefania. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, because I had some strange messages. Okay, so today we will be concentrating on the theoretical part with uh, Aspan Yar. So he will introduce all the uh, SDG 241 indicator on with his with its three dimensions and its 11 sub indicators. And uh, uh, he will be showing also all the documents uh, uh, that are needed for the uh, SDG 241 methodology. Tomorrow and uh, the day after tomorrow, we will be uh, working with the Gianluigi Nico that uh, uh, Aspandiaro just already presented. And he will introduce some uh, exercises and some um, uh, analysis through the STEDA. And everything will be based on your pilot test uh, uh, data. So again, Gianluigi will go through all the three dimensions and will uh, go through one by one all the 11 sub-indicators. Then at the end of the third day, we will be uh, having a presentation from Aspandiar showing the short, the medium, and the long-term expectation that we have. And finally, I will present the uh, data collection questionnaire that FAO is using to collect the data from all the countries. On the fourth day, so the last day, the floor will be given to you, so to uh, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, and you will present your agricultural survey and the, all the uh, data sources, uh, all the other data sources that can be used to have some SDG241 data. 
to collect some data on that before one. And finally, of course, we will have an open discussion where we can discuss on the gaps, on the challenges, and so having an open discussion with you for any other uh, concern that you might have and try to, to also have an action plan to overcome all the uh, constraints in case we have it. And then we will close, of course, uh, the four days. Uh, so every day uh, we will have a, a break of uh, 30, 20 minutes. Let's see, depending on the on the on the timing. So I leave again now the floor to Aspandiar for starting uh, the the training. Thank you very much, Stefania. So let me let me share my screen with you. So Stefania, can you confirm if you can see my slideshow? Yes. Okay, perfect. So SDG indicator 2.4.1, which is defined as proportion of agriculture area under productive and sustainable agriculture. We will cover in detail the different aspects of the indicator during the course of this training. Um, so before before even starting this training, let me let me emphasize that we have slightly reorganized the, the way we conduct this training, uh, with the understanding that Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, um, as I mentioned earlier, is a key partner, um, you know, throughout the development of the methodology, and is one of the country who uh, are very well aware of the indicator intricacies as well as its complexity. So with that understanding in mind, today we will cover uh, broadly in, in general terms, SEG indicator 2.4.1, and then we will go into the data collection part. Uh, for the analysis, we will, we will discuss it, uh, we'll discuss it tomorrow and the day after in more detail. So the objectives of this uh, training. So first and foremost, as I mentioned, I will walk you through the SDG indicator 2.4.1 conceptual and methodological basis. It's uh, compilation and interpretation. Uh, we will introduce the tools and instrument develop, developed for collecting and reporting data on the indicator. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let you know about the survey questionnaire and related document um, as well as SEG indicator in the context of uh, Agris survey program and 50 by 2030 initiative. Tomorrow and the day after, we will focus on the pilot tests that were conducted in um, uh, with the uh, with the help of uh, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. Uh, we will discuss the data collection, data entry, and data analysis uh, aspects to construct SEG indicator 2.4.1. Um, and on the last day, on the fourth day, we will hear from you and discuss the data gaps and your concrete plans in the short, medium, and long term to collect data on the indicator in order to bridge those gaps. And uh, finally, we will, sorry, finally, we will introduce the FAO data collection questionnaire as an instrument used by FAO to collect data from the member countries. Obviously, an overall aim of this training is uh, um, has always been to unite or assemble key stakeholder at the country level, those uh, who are responsible for collecting and reporting data, that is representatives uh, from the National Statistical Office, and those who are responsible for using that data uh, uh, pr to produce uh, or to develop evidence-based policies at the national or subnational level, that is the representatives from the Ministry of Agriculture and other relevant institutions. Um, now, I, 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 I do know that uh, uh, primarily for this particular training, we are joined by the data producer, that is the colleagues from, from the NSO. So just to give you, to give you some historical perspective, um, to set the stage for the, for the, for the four days uh, training, 
Um, in early 2016, the FAO Strategic Program on Sustainable Agriculture and Global Strategy to Improve Agriculture and Rural Statistics joined forces to develop the pioneer methodology for the then tier three SDG indicator 2.4.1 to measure progress towards target, target 2.4. Now, as many of you may know, defining and measuring sustainable agriculture, which is a multi-dimensional concept is challenging as it is complex, country specific, and thus despite several attempts in the past 50 years, uh, that is since uh, 1970, has never been done up until now. Uh, given the multidimensionality of the sustainability concept, FEO initiated a global discussion to deliberate the fundamental questions, that is what sustainability means in the context of agriculture, what are its fundamental building blocks, what are the economic, social, and environmental factors that affect and are in turn affected by sustainability in agriculture, both in intertemporal and interspatial way. Um, apart from these other questions that, uh, that were uh, taken into account was as to what thematic aspects to keep as part of the framework and what to let go of and how to strike a balance between the different sustainability issues faced by different regions and different countries how it will be measured and monitored consistently over time using a framework and data collection tool that are universal in nature, um, that is, that are uh, applicable both um, in, in developing as well as in developed world. As you will find out in the course of this training, the methodology of the indicator though appear very complex, yet, you know, the way it's structured is simple as it involves um, our thematic rules uh, to arrive at sustainability assessment um, of the country um, once the data has been collected, cleaned, processed, and, uh, and analyzed. Now, the approved and endorsed methodology of SDG 241 um, is a result of long participatory and consultative process that involved discussion with and contribution of thematic as well as subject matter experts statisticians, policymakers, and researchers from country institutions, that is national statistical offices, Ministry of Agriculture, um, international organizations, civil society, private sector, and academia on, on the very issue I mentioned earlier. And as, as I highlighted, DBS was one of the key institution whom we were engaged with throughout the course of uh, this uh, methodological development. The reason behind us involving these key stakeholders with diverse backgrounds was to make that sure that this indicator is owned by everyone, uh, especially countries. The current methodology of SG241 embodies uh, the following principles that is, it's uh, universal, it's policy relevant, and, uh, and it's practical. Um, now, the way the methodology of this multi-dimensional indicator is designed, and you will see that as we progress during this training, as I mentioned earlier, is simple, logical, um, and pragmatic. This was to ensure the sustainability of the indicator monitoring over time at the, at the country level. Now, goal two, zero hunger has five targets. The target that we are interested in is target 2.4, which is written in detail here. Uh, As Sonia, can... Sorry, I, I don't know if it's only my problem, but I don't see that you're going, uh, I mean, you do, you're not changing the slides. Can you confirm if, if it has been changed now? Mm, not for me. Okay, can you confirm with other participants? I can't see. You know, the only the first uh, first you know page of the slide is you know be, you know showing here. Okay, so let me reshare my screen with you.
Is it changing now? No. No? No. No. Oh, okay. Uh, let uh, try. Uh, Can you? Uh, yeah. yeah no, 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 now, yes. yes. Now, yes. Yes. Is it okay? okay? Okay, perfect. So, SDG goal two, uh, as I was mentioning, zero hunger has five targets. The target that we are interested in today is target 2.4, which is written in extensive here. As you can see, like many other SDG targets, this is a very complex one. Um, I have highlighted in red some of the key aspects that needs to be captured as we try to measure progress towards this target. Sustainability, resilience, productivity, production, um, uh, environmental considerations, that is climate change, um, extreme uh, weather, droughts, flooding, um, soil quality, etc. All these diverse aspects in one single target. Clearly, this would require an approach that captures these different dimensions or aspects captured in target 2.4. The indicator that was submitted to the interagency and expert group on sustainable development goals or IAEG SDG and was approved in March 2015 is proportion of agriculture area under productive and sustainable agriculture. Now, the indicator is now tier two, uh, which means that the methodology of the indicator has now been approved and endorsed uh, um, with further refinements uh, undertaken in the biodiversity indicator um, in, in, in 2019. Um, however, in general, data is not available or partially available. Now, the formula that we propose to measure the indicator is very simple and straightforward. It is the area under productive and sustainable agriculture divided by the agriculture land area. So let us focus on the denominator first, which is agriculture land area. It is defined as arable land plus permanent crops and permanent meadows and pastures. It is a well-known and established concept that is collected by statistical bodies, that is the national statistical offices in countries and compiled internationally via questionnaire by FAO and is disseminated through FAO stack, which is a platform used by FAO to uh, disseminate uh, uh, agriculture related statistics. Um, the issue obviously is with the numerator um, of, the, of the formula. How do we measure area under productive uh, and sustainable agriculture? Um, what, what is clear from the description of the target, which I covered on the previous slide, that we have to look at sustainability across all its uh, dimensions, that is economic, social, um, and, um, and environmental. Um, this means that agriculture land area under productive and sustainable agriculture will be the agriculture area of those agriculture holdings or agriculture farms that satisfy the sustainability criteria for the 11 sub-indicators selected across the three dimensions of, uh, of, of sustainability. Here are the sequential steps that were used in the methodological development of SDG 241. So we first discussed and chose the scale of assessment uh, for SDG 241 and the choice made was to adopt a bottoms up approach whereby we selected agriculture holdings or agriculture farms level sustainability that is then aggregated at a national or subnational level. We then determined the scope of activities of the holding to be covered by this indicator. And the choice made for 241 was to focus on agriculture holdings that are involved in crops and livestock uh, production activities primarily. We then reviewed the dimensions uh, to be covered and we decided to stick to the classical dimensions of sustainability, uh, which I referred to on the previous slide as well, economic, 
social um, and environmental. Let me add here that in the beginning of the process, when we embarked on the development of the indicators methodology, we selected five dimensions um, that included in addition to the three um, economic, social and environmental, two other dimensions that are institutional or governance and resilience. However, later on uh, in the process, it was decided to integrate resilience uh, with the um, economic dimension and to drop the governance dimension as we are exclusively focused on uh, farm level sustainability assessments. We then zoomed inside the dimension into what we called um, themes or different aspects to be covered within each respective dimension. Um, in total, we have 11 themes. Um, across this, uh, the three dimensions. And then in turn, we selected the sub indicators uh, that are needed to measure progress within, the, within those themes or those, uh, those aspects. Um, so we have 11 sub indicators and to measure progress within these themes, um, uh, we have 11, 11, um, 11 sub indicators to measure progress within 11 themes. Um, then we establish sustainability criteria, also known as thresholds or cutoff points for, uh, for each sub indicator to classify the agriculture holdings and the agriculture land area that it owns, manages or operates by assigning it red, yellow and green statuses, uh, which we call the traffic light approach. Of course, this traffic light approach will be covered in detail tomorrow. Um, and, and the day after uh, when uh, Nico John, Gianluigi will be covering the, the data collection and uh, data analysis part. Then we selected the data collection instrument um, for, for the indicator, um, which, uh, which uh, uh, for the time being, the recommended source for data collection for SDG 241 is agriculture surveys or, or, or farm surveys. We also discussed to decide on the periodicity um, or frequency for uh, data collection and reporting. For SDG 241, it is set at three years. And finally, the modality for reporting the indicator. Uh, for this, we developed both uh, a dashboard where all the 11 sub indicators or themes are presented in one chart, uh, where each sub indicator is illustrated separately by sustainability statuses, the green, yellow, or red, um, and an aggregate SCG 241 that can be calculated directly from the, from the dashboard. Here are the principles that were used to develop the indicators uh, methodology. First, the policy relevance, actionability. We wanted to make sure that every sub indicator selected as part of SG241 framework had a meaning for the policy makers and thus provide information based on which informed decisions or policies um, uh, can be made uh, to improve the overall situation on the ground. Meaning the sub indicators must be easily understood and the results easily interpreted by the policymakers. For example, is agriculture sustainability declining and why? And what policies need, needs to be implemented to address these, uh, these issues? Universality and uh, comparability are fundamental. We are an SDG process, a universal process. Thus, we needed to make sure that the indicator is applicable or valid everywhere. It must be relevant for all countries of the world that is both uh, developing and developed. Um, specifically from international comp comparability point of view, um, uh, the, uh, another important uh, point that uh, we kept in mind was the way the indicators are computed must ensure comparability across countries in order to ensure global reporting. Um, comparability, however, does not necessarily mean the use of absolute standards. 
For instance, agriculture wages may be compared with the national minimum wage rate, even if these wage rates vary from one country to another. Similarly, compliance with national environmental standards or nationally recognized certification systems can be considered in the computing, um, in computing environmental sub-indicators, even if national criteria vary from one country to another. So this is a sort of flexibility that we offer to countries for them to um, contextualize uh, or customize uh, SDG 241 according to their own uh, um, conditions. Measurability and cost effectiveness were very high um, in our mind as we were trying to find the right balance uh, between an ideal indicator from subject matter perspective and one that can be measured consistently with a reasonable cost over time. Uh, the affordability of the indicator in terms of data collection and reporting at a country level was our top priority. Um, to corroborate further on this very point, there are many sustainability issues or aspects um, that can be considered within the framework of, uh, uh, that could have been considered within the framework of SG241, but their measurement um, was either difficult, complex, or would have involved cost that could not be sustained in the framework of regular monitoring exercise. So cost effectiveness, um, as it is related to measurability, the cost uh, associated with indicator measurement have systemically uh, been considered in relation with, uh, with accuracy and reliability of the results obtained through different measurement options. And finally, minimum cross correlation uh, between the, between the sub-indicators. So in selecting a limited set of themes and sub-indicators, efforts were made to reduce cross-correlation between different sub-indicators. Obviously, as you know, high cross-correlation between sub-indicators would imply that two or more sub-indicators are capturing the same sustainability theme. In this case, the selection or inclusion of one single sub-indicator instead of several uh, would have been sufficient to adequately measure agriculture sustainability performances. Um, now, all these decisions had implication for the choice of the sub-indicators for the different dimension, the choice of sustainability criteria um, chosen for each sub-indicator, and the level of uh, sophistication in data collection that we will discuss uh, in, the, in the later sessions. Now, with regards to the measurement scope, as we are interested in assigning agriculture area sustainability statuses, the basic unit of observation and measurement selected for SEG 241 are agriculture holdings or agriculture farms, with focus on those that primarily produce um, crops and livestock or a mix uh, of both crops and livestock and to check as to whether these holdings are economically feasible, environment friendly and socially acceptable. So in a nutshell to, to, um, to, um, to say it in, a, in black and white terms, the focus of SG241 is agriculture holdings that are primarily engaged in crops and livestock uh, production systems. So here we include both intensive, um, extensive and subsistence agriculture holding as long as their primary activities are crops, livestock or its mix. Um, these may include both food and non-food uh, products and crops uh, and those who are producing uh, or growing crop for fodder or energy purposes. Um, and another important point that, uh, that is worth mentioning is that secondary activities are considered, like say, for example, aquaculture, um, agroforestry, if and only if these takes place on the agriculture area of the, of, of the farm who are, uh, whose primary production is crops and livestock uh, uh, products. What is out of scope of the, of the indicator um, um, is those holding that are focused exclusively on aquaculture or agroforestry. 
So if the primary production of an agriculture holding or uh, agriculture farm is aquaculture or agroforestry related uh, commodities, then uh, those are out of scope. Um, secondly, production from gardens, backyards, and hobby farms are also excluded from the scope. So is food harvested from the wild, common lands, which are not exclusively uh, managed by the agriculture holding for, uh, for uh, producing agriculture products and, uh, and nomadic pastoralism. Now, just to explain what nomadic pastoralism is, I don't know as to whether it is uh, that common in, in Bangladesh, but it's a practice of rearing livestock by moving with animals from places to places in search of pastures. It's a way of life of people who do not live um, consistently or continually in, in the same place, but move uh, cyclically or periodically from one place to another. So regarding the periodicity for monitoring the and reporting the indicator um, was, as I mentioned earlier, is set at three years. Um, and this was, uh, this decision is a result of various considerations. First, the SCG indicator 2.4.1 measure progress toward more productive and sustainable agriculture. And for many of the sub indicators uh, selected as part of its framework, um, uh, you know, it is unlikely that their values will change from one year to another. And secondly, the, the, the three years data collection and reporting will enable countries to have at least three data points on the indicator before 2030. So this will in turn help the country's, um, you know, uh, institutions, um, uh, especially the national statistical offices and ministries. Um, um, to make a historical trend to assess uh, the country performance over time and benchmark it against uh, other peers in the region. And lastly, um, but um, um, very importantly, obviously the, the, the three years periodicity was set to minimize uh, or reduce data collection and reporting burden on the countries. As mentioned earlier, SC241 current methodology is designed whereby information is collected through agriculture surveys or farm surveys. Sustainability assessments are made for agriculture holdings and agriculture land area that it owns, manages, and operates. And the final results are expressed as a national value. However, let me emphasize that the methodology, the way it is designed is scale independent. What I mean by this, that it can be adopted for any administrative uh, or geographical level. Um, though any introduction of additional stratification variables uh, will certainly have implication for the sample size and thus the cost of data collection. So in order to further enrich the analysis for informed national policy making uh, purposes, the indicator can be disaggregated um, you know, according to the following uh, uh, variables. So the typical disaggregation variables that we propose to countries are household and non-household sector, um, differentiation of the holding based on as to whether they are focused on crops, whether they are focused on livestock or holdings which are producing a mix of both, and then as to whether this holding is using water for irrigation or not. Other stratification variables that the country may want to consider for, uh, for national policy making um, is that they can replicate the indicator at uh, different uh, administrative levels. Um, they can disaggregate the result by size of farms and they can also uh, built in uh, gender disaggregation of the indicator within their sample size for them to have, um, you know, uh, gender disaggregated results. Now, as mentioned earlier, the indicator is multidimensional. This slide presents a table or a matrix that includes everything that we need to know about SG241. 
towards the extreme left, as you can see, um, that the indicator cut across the three dimensions of uh, sustainability, uh, economic, environmental, and social. Within each dimension, uh, we have themes. For instance, you can see within the economic dimension, we have three themes, um, land productivity, profitability, and resilience and corresponding three sub indicators to measure progress within those themes. So for uh, land productivity theme, we have farm output value per hectare. For the profitability theme, we have net farm income. And for the resilience theme, we have risk mitigation mechanism. Likewise, for the um, uh, environmental dimension, we have five themes uh, and five sub indicators. And for the social theme, we have three themes and three sub indicators. So in total, we have 11 themes, as you can see here, and 11 sub indicators. This decision was of course, in relation to the measurability and cost effectiveness, as I was mentioning earlier. Um, now, uh, to measure and monitor sustainability in agriculture, a much longer list of issues or themes uh, could have been considered or captured. However, there was this feeling that capturing 11 in total would be a very good uh, step uh, forward. One other important point or important consideration to take note of is that we had to develop a universal framework that cover the entire spectrum of agriculture, confronting sustainability issues that varies from one country to another or within country from one region to another. So we had to come up with a, with, 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 with a framework which is rigid enough for it to be universal, but at the same time flexible enough for, for, for countries to contextualize and tailor it according to their own uh, conditions. So another important consideration that is evident from this slide is uh, are, are, you know, as you can see here, not all the sub indicators are uh, applicable to all kinds of farming systems. So as you can see here, and we will explain that um, as part of each sub indicator, um, you know, um, um, metadata exercises that uh, within the social dimension, the wage rate in agriculture and food insecurity experience scale is applicable to a certain kind of uh, agriculture holdings. And as you can see here, the reference period and the recall period of all the sub indicator is not the same, which I explained on the previous slide that um, you know some aspects that we are trying to capture as part of the framework of 241 are structural in nature and hence their value values may not change from one year to another. So, so uh, and thus we have kept the, the period, uh, the, the recall period or the reference period for those particular sub indicators different, but this will be explained as part of each sub indicator presentation. So as I was saying earlier, the hardest choice for us was to limit the framework of 241 to 11 themes and 11 sub indicators. Um, a series of expert discussions in meetings, consultations, literature review uh, have shown that sustainability is so complex that in general, uh, a much longer list of issues are considered and used to capture sustainability in agriculture. In this slide, you can see some issues that are considered important, but are not captured within SE 241 framework. We still recommend countries to consider these themes if these are relevant uh, in their national or subnational context in order to assess the sustainability of their agriculture uh, appropriately for national policy making. But these are the themes which are not covered within the, within the framework of SCG 241. One critical aspect that we will discuss in detail, um, again, as part of each sub indicator um, in the upcoming presentations um, um, uh, by Jan Luigi, was the establishment of thresholds or sustainability criteria 
um, based on which we, we assign sustainability statuses to each agriculture holding and the agricultural land area that it hold, manages, or operates. Briefly, um, the thresholds or sustainability criteria are national policy-based or international targets or science-based absolute or relative values um, above or below which for each sub-indicator, the agriculture holding is assigned sustainability status. Now, in order to capture the concept of continuous progress towards sustainability, a traffic light approach was, uh, was developed or devised in which three sustainability levels were considered for each sub-indicator. So green desirable, yellow acceptable, and red unsustainable. Now, this traffic light approach acknowledges the trade-offs that exists between sustainability uh, themes and dimensions and the need to find an acceptable balance between them. So for each, so each sub-indicator is assessed at the level of agriculture holding and thereafter the sustainability levels or statuses are associated with agricultural land area of the agriculture holding and then um, uh, these are aggregated uh, by, by green, yellows, and red at the national level for, uh, for reporting. Now, let me, uh, another important point is that these criteria or thresholds for each particular sub-indicators have, have been discussed and established in consultation with thematic experts and have been fine-tuned in the light of um, the various uh, tests um, that we have conducted in selected countries of which uh, Bangladesh was uh, obviously, obviously one. So recollecting from the previous slides, the reporting of SG241 can be done at various levels using both a dashboard and uh, an aggregate indicator. What we require countries to report on is a dashboard and aggregate indicator at the national level. Now, what makes the dashboard approach more appealing um, is that it helps visualize the performances across the dimensions as well as across independent themes and sub-indicators separately. This makes the dashboard policy relevant uh, and actionable as it gives the policymaker a tool to quickly check at a single glance where the major um, sustainability problems lies, where to put in emphasis, what policies need to be put in place and resources directed uh, to address it, to improve the situation and to move towards more sustainable agriculture. An added advantage of the dashboard is that it allows the possibility of combining data from, from different sources. So as you can see here, um, here is a dashboard uh, produced uh, for, uh, for uh, country X um, in year Y. We have reproduced the same kind of dashboard for Bangladesh based on the results of the pilot tests. We will, of course, discuss that with you in the course of this presentation. So on the horizontal axis, we may, or on the x-axis, we measure the themes or the sub-indicators. On the vertical axis, as you can see here, we measure the proportion of agriculture land area or percentage of agriculture land area. And, and based on the, on the thresholds used, as you can see here, each sub-indicator is assigned uh, three colors, green, yellow, and red. Now, computation and construction of each sub-indicator is carried out separately. Sustainability statuses are, are made for each sub-indicator agri agriculture holding level. Uh, and thereafter, all agriculture um, holding level results associated, uh, are associated with, uh, with its agricultural land area. Um, these are aggregated at the national or sub-national level uh, by sustainability statuses and finally reported again, you know, using, using this dashboard. Now, if the country wishes to report results at a sub-national level for policy use, I'm emphasizing it again and again, then the stratification variables or level of geographical disaggregation must be planned in the sampling design 
of the farm survey upfront uh, to accommodate for it. Okay. Now, the final aggregate SG241 um, is derived directly from the dashboard at the country level. The final number of 241 is a result of the sub indicator that has recorded the highest unsustainability performance. So as you can see here, we can easily um, you know, uh, identify the sub indicator that has the highest uh, proportion or percentage of red amongst the 11, okay? So in this very example, if we look across the 11 sub indicator, um, the profitability sub indicator is the one that has reported 40% red. And this will be the aggregate SDG 2.4.1 value um, derived from, from the dashboard directly. Now, another way using which we can, um, we can derive uh, uh, the value for the aggregate indicator is using these two formulas. So we see amongst the 11 sub indicator, the one that has recorded the minimum level of green plus yellow, which is the, accept, the, the sustainable agricultural land area, or you know, put it differently on the flip side, the, amongst the 11, the one that has recorded the maximum level of unsustainable or red. Okay. So as you can see here, for this particular sub indicator, it's very straightforward. It has recorded the highest level of red or the minimum level of desirable and acceptable, which we call sustainable. Now, the performances of countries over time can be measured by the change in proportion of agriculture area that is, uh, that is unsustainable or conversely by tracking the value of this formula. In case we are focused on tracking the level of unsustainability, then in this case, an increase in the value of um, this formula uh, over time will indicate further degradation uh, while the decrease in the value of this formula will indicate improvement. Now, we said in the beginning that policy relevance is very important consideration. In this respect, the dashboard approach that we have um, uh, developed is uh, particularly very interesting as it provides a structured and transparent framework to measure and report on sustainable agriculture. It allows focus on main issues related to sustainability and encourage, encourage discussion by linking it to policy actions. Um, and lastly, it drives the policy towards uh, agriculture sustainability issues with focus on uh, intervention at, at, uh, at various levels. Of course, as you saw, um, the dashboard is easy to interpret in terms of the context to which country agriculture is far from being productive and, uh, and, and sustainable. And it's very easy to identify and prioritize the area that require, that require intervention and immediate attention uh, by the policymakers. So uh, I will stop here. Please let me know if you have any question regarding the, 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 this very generic uh, presentation around SEG 241 um, that we have covered up until now. Uh, so Stefania, the floor is... Uh, is Welcome back. Uh, it is uh, 3.45, 46 actually in Bangladesh. So it's uh, time to resume the training. And I leave the floor to Aspandar for the next presentation. Thank you very much, Stefania. So let me just open my presentation.
we see the email now? Yeah, just wait for one second. How about now? Oh, yes, perfect. OK, so as I, as I told you earlier, we have slightly reorganized the pattern uh, for, for this uh, training. So the framework of SC241, which constitute the 11 sub-indicators, will be discussed from tomorrow in detail over the course of next two days. Uh, today, uh, we will cover the data collection instruments that uh, FAO has uh, developed to collect information um, um, on, on, on this indicator and to support countries' efforts, uh, uh, you know, to report the indicator uh, 241 on periodic basis uh, for uh, UNSC reporting. So, as highlighted in the previous presentation, the focus of 241 is to assess the sustainability of agriculture holdings and its agriculture land area. Um, thus, agriculture survey or farm survey offers an opportunity for collecting data through a single instrument for all 11 sub indicator of SC241. Um, this decision to use farm survey is in line with the uh, country efforts supported by, by FAO to develop farm survey as the most appropriate tool for generating agriculture statistics in a cost effective way. Um, the choice of farm survey was made because of the following reasons. Farm surveys do exist in countries in one shape or form or another to collect data on different aspects of uh, agriculture sector. Secondly, the use of uh, farm surveys will help collect information on all the 11 sub indicators using one data collection instrument, thus avoiding the additional work of integrating information from different data sources that are usually managed by uh, different uh, institution and uh, organization at a country level. Thirdly, using the farm survey, um, all information will be collected from uh, agriculture holdings selected through a nationally representative sample, thus avoiding the problem associated with the use of uh, different data sources. And uh, lastly, as I um, said earlier, farm survey is expected to be cost effective in comparison to putting in place monitoring uh, systems, that is uh, soil and water sampling and laboratory testing, uh, geographical information system and robust uh, ad administrative record system, etc. However, uh, though farm survey are well suited to measure some sub indicators within the economic dimension of, uh, of SG241, it may not be an ideal tool for measuring environmental and social sustainability of the agriculture holding. Um, having said that, typically, uh, environmental impacts of agriculture are uh, usually measured through uh, monitoring systems, like, say, for example, remote sensing soil and water sampling or other tools associated with a specific area rather than within a single agriculture holding. Um, in addition, we do understand that for several environmental themes, it is unlikely that farmers would be able to assess the environmental impact of their farming practices on issues like fertilizer pollution or uh, pesticide use. So using farm survey instead of environmental monitoring systems, therefore would imply moving uh, away from measuring outcomes or impacts um, to rather measure uh, or assess farmers practices and behaviors. Similarly, the information in the social uh, dimension is generally captured through household surveys. Uh, while in majority of the cases, agriculture farm holdings are closely associated with a given household, it is not always the case. And therefore care must be given to capturing this information through uh, dedicated survey design. 
Um, having said that, the methodological note of SU241 does offer the countries the flexibility of using combination of data sources other than farm survey um, called alternative data sources that include uh, many uh, different uh, um, uh, you know, instruments, which we will discuss as part of this presentation. So uh, to facilitate data collection and reporting on SDG 241, uh, as, uh, as I, I highlighted, we resorted to two approaches. So one is around agriculture surveys or farm surveys. The second is uh, around alternative data sources, which I just briefly spoke about. So the, within the farm survey approach, we opted for two options, okay? So the first one is standalone survey questionnaire, which is designed as a module that contain the minimum set of questions needed to collect information on uh, SDG 241. Um, now this standalone survey can be administered uh, independently or attach a separate module uh, or integrated at appropriate places within existing, existing agriculture surveys of the country. Um, and then we have uh, uh, basically this um, other option, uh, which I will speak about uh, later during this presentation, whereby we integrated all the questions that are needed to collect information on SDG 241 within the flagship projects of, uh, of FAO, um, in collaboration, of course, with World Bank and EFAD, which is Agri Survey Program and 50 by 2030 Initiative. Um, to make sure that these uh, the, the, the beneficiary countries of these projects, once they implement, uh, you know, and collect information using uh, these two instruments, uh, they are uh, able to uh, readily report on uh, farm survey based SEG indicators, including SEG 241. And alternative data sources, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it includes a variety of different sources, which include earth observation um, or remote sensing, administrative records household surveys, uh, monitoring sense systems, uh, uh, sense agriculture censuses, uh, uh, other ad hoc studies, etc. So as mentioned earlier, the standalone survey module questionnaire um, is designed as a module with a minimum set of question. It is flexible, it can be administered as, as an independent survey or attached as a module uh, or integrated within existing national farm surveys. Um, cognitive tests of the questionnaires were carried out um, um, in Mexico, Bangladesh, and, uh, and Rwanda. Um, the basic purpose of us uh, conducting these cognitive tests were to refine the survey questionnaire from design flow, uh, comprehension, recall, and respondent judgment perspective. Secondly, to assess if the questions uh, asked within the farm survey uh, module are sufficient and fully understood by a limited number of uh, heterogeneous respondents. Um, we also uh, conducted extended tests uh, in Bangladesh, um, you know, a couple of years back. Um, we will be discussing it in detail from tomorrow morning. Um, the basic idea behind us conducting these uh, pilots were to uh, test and revise the proposed uh, sustainability criteria to determine the average time of the survey uh, to revise the status scripts and routines that have been developed to analyze the data and revise accordingly the methodological note and, uh, and support documents. Now let's uh, focusing, uh, while keeping focus on the standalone uh, survey questionnaire, the survey questionnaire has uh, five sections. Um, each with each section containing relevant uh, questions. The first section is introduction. So it contains information um, uh, about the survey module, uh, its basic objectives and ask questions uh, related to identification of the holding and the holder. The second section within the survey module focus on the area and land tenure of the agriculture holding. 
The third section has questions related to economic dimension of the holding. The fourth section um, have questions related to environmental dimension of the holding. And the fifth section has questions related to the social dimension of the holding. So this is how the uh, standalone survey questionnaire uh, questionnaire looks like. Um, it's not new to Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they were um, involved in the development of, uh, of this questionnaire. Plus data on this questionnaire was uh, collected uh, in the field from selected districts within uh, Bangladesh. Of course, the Hello, Aspangar. Oh, okay, we lost the connection. So uh, let's wait. Okay, you already joined again. Aspangar, can you hear us? Aspangar? or uh, I got disconnected for some time. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Now, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we lost, I think, uh, one minute. Okay, so let me go back. And share again the screen because we lost completely you. Can, can, you, can you see it now? No. Okay, now we can see, no, no, not anymore. Okay, now yes. Okay. So let me go back. Yeah, you were at this light. Okay. Sorry. So I was saying that, you know, this, this survey questionnaire is not new to BBS. They, they are familiar with this questionnaire because this was the same questionnaire uh, that was used to collect information in the field, um, uh, you know, during the pilot tests in Bangladesh in 2017 and uh, 2018 and 19. Now, there would be trivial changes within the questionnaire since then because uh, there were uh, some discussions uh, uh, after that pilot exercise based on which we further refined the questionnaire. So there will be slight uh, changes that you will see from the one that you already have, uh, you know, that was used to collect uh, data during, uh, during those tests. Now, the updated version of this questionnaire, of course, is available uh, on, um, on our website. Um, you know, I will show you the page as to, as to where you can, uh, where you, can um, you know, access this questionnaire. Now, mind you, one, one other important point that uh, for data collection during the pilot exercise, this questionnaire was translated into 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 local language by the by the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics for them to a, be able to collect information, uh, um, uh, you know, um, from the from the respondents. Now, we have developed uh, several support documents. Uh, that were shared, of course, with BBS at that point in time, and now have been revised and updated and re-uploaded to SCG241 webpage. Um, these support documents serve as a background material um, um, for the um, before fielding the survey. So, you know, all these documents needs to be thoroughly um, uh, sifted through by the NSO colleagues so that they can better plan their, uh, their data collection as well as data entry and, uh, and analysis. 
Now, uh, the support documents in include enumerator manual, uh, instruction manual for uh, data entry operations and analysis, the guidelines on data analysis to compute the sub indicators, the sampling guidance for SEG241, and FAO statistical toolkit that comprises of a code book, a tabulation plan, and modular data scripts to support data analysis. Of course, along with the methodological node and the survey module, all these support documents have been uploaded to SCG241 web page, and uh, you can readily access, access these. Now, focusing on, on uh, all the support documents each in turn, so the enumerator manual has been developed to train enumerators, surveyors, and supervisors before the deployment to administer the question. Um, the, this document contains definition of the key terms, concepts, and the meaning behind the questions asked. It also provides guidance on the use of skip and filter, question, uh, filter questions um, and gives examples of commonly encountered instances where questions and responses may not be easy to administer and record uh, respectively. Instruction uh, manual on data entry operation has been developed to describe data entry operations, of course. Uh, that is all the steps that must be performed in order to organize the collected data into an Excel spreadsheet or other statistical package. The procedures to process and analyze data collected and constructed the 11 sub indicators according to the dashboard approach. Um, this document assumes that enumerators and data analysts are familiar with the survey questionnaire and the methodology of SEG241 respectively. If not, then the enumerators and data analysts are strongly encouraged to carefully read and get familiar with, uh, with this document before proceeding with, uh, um, uh, with reading the, uh, of this instruction manual. Uh, the guidelines on data analysis and reporting are designed for use by the data producers and data users alike. These are meant for government data and statistical authorities like uh, BBS, um, the private sector as well, civil society, researchers, and other organizations that who will generate and uh, use data and statistics for calculating sub-indicators of SG241. The steps on calculation of thresholds and final reporting of the 11 sub indicator as a dashboard have also been captured in, in this document. Now, there is another document uh, which has already been drafted and uploaded on our website. It's uh, about sampling guidance on SG241. It contains information about uh, sampling design, that is sample size, sampling units, and sampling frames, the reporting units, the different estimation domains that needs to be um, you know, kept in mind uh, uh, before, uh, before um, administering the, the questionnaire as well as analyzing the data. The estimator and strat stratification variables, uh, sample allocations within different strata and other issues related to SCG241 uh, sample selection. We have also, uh, uh, develop this e-learning course. Of course, this is around option one. For the time being, we, 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 we are still on the, on the standalone uh, questionnaire that has been developed. It provides information on the key aspects of the indicator, um, its scope and coverage, the dimension, themes, and sub-indicators, history, data collection, and reporting. So all, all the stuff that we have discussed until so far and will be discussing in the next three days has been captured in this e-learning course uh, as well, which is a very good resource for you to, for you to, um, you know, take. So here is the screenshot of the support documents that I've been talking about. So uh, you know we have this methodological note, then we have an enumerator manual around the farm survey uh, module or the questionnaire that I just spoke about. And the different documents, the sampling guidance, uh, you know, the data entry operations and data analysis and, uh, you know, um, uh, calculation um, uh, document that we have been, uh, that we have developed to construct the 
11 sub indicator of SG241. Now, having covered the first part, um, that is the standalone survey questionnaire, the option two around farm survey is um, um, to leverage and capitalize on uh, agris survey program, um, which is soon to be scaled up to uh, the 50 by 2030 initiative that aims to support 50 low and lower middle income countries with a survey program by 2030. So in this respect, this is just a brief introduction that I will give you about these two initiatives. The Agri-Survey program has different uh, modules uh, of which uh, we have uh, core uh, economy and PME modules as the key ones Probably we lost him again. Yeah, hello, husband Jar. Can you hear us? Yeah, we lost hello, him Stephanie. again. Hello, I'm sorry yeah. again. I think we lost him. Yeah. Okay, you are back. Can, now. can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. I'm really yes, sorry. Share it. Yeah, my. Yeah, my internet is, is a bit unstable for the for the moment. But can you hear me properly now? Yes, yes, but we don't see your screen. Oh, yes, yes, I'm going to display it again. Can you see it now? Yes. OK. So I was talking about the, the second option within the um, agriculture survey options that we have developed to collect information on SCG 241. Um, you know, so here the idea is to leverage and capitalize on the agri-survey program, um, which is soon to be scaled up uh, to 50 by 2030 initiative. And 50 by 2030 initiative is a program which is supported by FAO. World Bank and IFAT to support 50 country with, uh, with agriculture survey program by 2030. Um, primarily the, 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 the beneficiary countries for the 50 by 2030 initiative is low and lower middle income countries um, as, um, as categorized by or as grouped by the World Bank. So within agri-survey program, we have uh, different modules. In fact, we have five modules of which uh, we have selected three to collect information on SG241. So the three uh, that we have selected are the core module, the economy module and the uh, uh, production methods and uh, environment module. So within the core module, uh, we have integrated all the questions of uh, SG241 within the guidelines or the questionnaire of Agri-Survey program. It allows um, uh, countries to collect all information on SG241 in one single year. There is another option which has been developed as well within Agri-Survey program, whereby we integrated all the question of SG241 into economy and the PME modules. It allows for uh, data collection on respective uh, sub-indicator of SE241 in two consecutive years. So the questions from the um, required for the sub-indicators in the social and economic dimensions are uh, um, integrated within the core module, while questions on environmental sub-indicators are integrated with the production methods and environment module. Um, and the second initiative, 50 by 2030, we exclusively use the PME module uh, for us to collect all information on SE241 in one single year. Um, if you are interested in more information on these two initiatives, um, and if you uh, uh, want to find out as to whether Bangladesh um, is, um, is an eligible country to qualify for 50 by 2030, um, then of course you can um, you can click on this link and it will give you more information or else we can always put you in touch with the relevant colleagues 
who are spearheading uh, you know, the work uh, in these two initiatives. So here are the supporting documents um, that we have developed already, and these are already available online. So the first one is this Handbook on Agriculture Integrated Survey, or AGRIS. Um, which is implemented through the agri survey program in selected countries. And the technical note, the draft technical note that we have prepared um, on how the beneficiary countries of these two projects, that is the agri survey program and 50 by 2030 initiative can go about collecting information on SDG 241 um, in, in, these two, in these two projects. Now, the option three, which is the use of alternative data sources. As you can see here in this matrix, we have uh, highlighted um, for the sub indicator some potential data sources um, apart from agriculture survey around which the, the methodology is designed, some other data sources that can be possibly or potentially used to collect information on those sub indicators. So as you can see here, the farm output value per hectare, uh, some information uh, about this sub indicator can be collected um, um, uh, from agriculture or uh, livestock census. Uh, other information can be collected using GIS and remote sensing, household survey and others and so on. So for each sub indicator, um, some um, potential uh, alternative data sources have been highlighted in this matrix. Um, however, um, several aspects needs to be carefully considered prior to using alternative data sources to, re to, to report on SE241. In order to produce consistent and reliable data as per recommended and, and scoping of the indicator, it is advised that the use of alternative data sources may be considered when the available uh, data sets fulfill the following criteria. First and the foremost, uh, it should be demonstrated that alternative data sources uh, respects the rec recommended stratification uh, that is uh, that I just spoke about. That is, uh, you know, the, the farm type as to whether um, this agriculture holding is focused on crops, livestock, or a mix of both. Um, as to whether this uh, holding is uh, is irrigated or non-irrigated, and as to whether this is a household or non-household. Uh, agriculture holding. Um, it should be made sure that the data available are at the same level of territorial desegregation as the farm survey. Secondly, you know, um, it should be demonstrated that the alternative data sources capture the same phenomena as proposed by the agriculture survey or farm survey, um, that these alternative data sources are compliant with international or national standards and classification systems to be internationally comparable. And, and lastly, that the reference air and periodicity um, is homogeneous across uh, all, all the 11 sub indicators. One other important consideration is that, uh, you know, the, the data taken from these alternative data sources um, it should be made sure that it can be reflected in or attribute to agriculture land um, you know, uh, while respecting the different farm topologies and agriculture regions. Um, having said that, alternative data sources can be used to complement or validate farm survey results. This combined approach has the potential to improve the validity and soundness of the results. Um, in particular, uh, in countries that have well-established monitoring systems and that are able to produce uh, quality uh, information using those systems over time, um, uh, you know, the, the information from, from these other sources may be used and leveraged in different ways, depending on the quality and regularity of its collection. Um, for example, um, you know, these alternative sources can be used to replace farm survey questions uh, where these sources uh, are available and respond to the sustainability criteria 
the criteria uh, you know that I've been talking about uh, in my previous slides. Um, it should be uh, you know that the alternative data sources could also complement form survey questions by providing additional contextual information uh, that is helpful to interpret the results. That is uh, to cross check the form survey results um, for identifying any inconsistencies. Um, as well to ensure the robustness of the indicator. This validation exercise can be done both ex post or during the data collection by providing the external data to the enumerators before going to the field. In this way, the enumerator can probe whether the responses to the farm survey are consistent with the a priori um, external knowledge that the, um, that the National Statistical Office or, or in this case, the BBS may be having. In any case, it is recommended that countries complement the farm survey questions with uh, information from monitoring systems um, that can measure the impact of agriculture on the environment, that is soil, water, fertilizer, pesticides, biodiversity, and on health, such as uh, pesticide residues in food and human bodies. Um, this will provide additional information and help cross-checking, uh, again, the robustness of SG241 results with regards to environmental dimension of sustainability. So I will stop here just to uh, highlight to you the, I will cover this as part of my third presentation, but just to briefly tell you the guidelines on alternative data sources for the time being are under elaboration. Um, we have uh, consult, we are consulting with the uh, partners um, to, um, to make sure that we have a practical manual that the countries can use um, for them to implement, um, um, which will facilitate them uh, on how to go about using the census and administrative record, GIS, or other sources of information to report on, on some of the sub-indicators of SG241. So I stop here, Stefania. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take those. So in this uh, very presentation that we usually present on the very last day of the training, but I thought it's worthwhile presenting it on the first day so that you have a complete holistic 360 degree overview of SG241 before we go into the actual uh, technical stuff of how to collect information, uh, when to collect information, um, how then we you know, enter that information into um, relevant statistical packages, how to play the numbers for us to construct the sub-indicators. So this, this you know, the, the, today we, we, are, we are giving you more, uh, uh, more you know, detailed bird eye view of uh, SE241. So we already discussed the conceptual and methodological basis for SE241. Um, it's data collection instrument, which is which is agriculture survey or farm survey, um, and you know we will be discussing the tools and mechanism for for reporting it to FAO, uh, you know, in in the course of next days. This presentation will uh, cover the progress made by FAO until so far. Our planned future course of action and expectations in terms of countries' readiness to report on the indicator in the short, medium, and long term. Our ultimate aim, obviously, is to maximize country reporting on, on SG241 and thereby gradually reclassify it as tier one over time. In summary, we will cover the following aspects the progress made on the methodological front the capacity development front, the country data collection front, and the reporting of the indicator to, to FAO. Now, by now you, you may have a very good idea that the methodology of 241 is based on agriculture surveys that is used as a main data collection instrument for all 11 sub-indicators. Reaching at this stage where the methodology is now has been a long participatory process of discussions with experts, several rounds of testing, which we discussed, 
and follow up technical work on development of methodological and support documents. So in total, um, we have conducted three expert group meetings. We presented the methodology while we were developing, developing it um, at scientific advisory committee of global strategy to improve agriculture and rural statistics. We um, consulted all national statistical offices of all member states uh, through a global consultation. And uh, we conducted two webinars with the interagency and expert group on sustainable development goals. Again, we uh, you know, um, uh, uh, carried out several rounds of testings that include test tests in Bangladesh, Kyrgyz Republic, Ecuador, Belgium, and Rwanda. We conducted cognitive tests in Kenya, Mexico, and Bangladesh. Uh, we conducted a field test of the survey questionnaire in Bangladesh. Um, and then um, we uh, conducted test of the FAO data collection questionnaire in 45 countries that Stefania will talk about in her presentation, uh, you know, in, in the next days. All background documents that I just spoke about, the enumerator manual, the sampling guidance, the data entry manual, the data analysis, uh, you know, guidelines, etc. Uh, have been finalized and uploaded to FAO SDG uh, 241, um, FAO SDG portal, uh, uh, um, spe specifically at SDG 241 webpage. Uh, we presented the methodology at several uh, events, um, you know, at AFCAS, at FAO Committee on Agriculture, at Brussels Briefing, at ICAS in India in 2019. We conducted bilateral training in 2019 uh, for Bangladesh, uh, Vietnam, and Oman. Uh, we trained 10 African countries in, co in collaboration with UNICA uh, for the African region. 17 countries from Asia and North Africa in We lost you, Aswandar. Aswandar, hello. I'm sorry, did you lose yeah. me again? Yeah, we lost you and the presentation. Okay. Okay, now we see the presentation. Okay, so I was saying that, you know, the methodology was discussed and presented at several locations at several key events, which include AFCAS, FAO Committee on Agriculture, Brussels Briefings, uh, International Conference on Agriculture Statistics in India in 2019. We conducted several bilateral trainings uh, in the past, in 2019, um, whereby we visited Dhaka, in fact, Bangladesh, and we trained, uh, you know, the, the national statistical staff as well as the numerators who were then to conduct these pilot uh, exercises. Um, we trained 10 countries uh, in Africa, 17 from Asia and North Africa, and 18 countries from Asia and Pacific. Again, Bangladesh was one of the participants and recipient of that particular training. So as you can see here, the name of Bangladesh is appearing time and again, um, you know, both in the methodological development phase in terms of discussions, uh, testing, but as well in terms of bilateral trainings that were conducted in 2019 and, uh, you know, multilateral trainings for a group of countries in uh, um, in, 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 in 2019 as well, once again. In 2020, we organized three virtual trainings um, uh, for Asia, uh, Latin America, and, um, and uh, African countries. We have completed already the e-learning courses, which we briefly discussed. We have translated the key support documents into three UN languages, uh, Arabic, Spanish, and French. We are in process of translating the other ones into Russian and, uh, and Chinese. We also took advantage of the country missions of the in-house 
uh, colleagues to raise SDG 241 awareness and confirm information on the national focal points and uh, as well as uh, to assess the national data availability and situation. In 2021, we continued with the virtual training amid COVID-19 on SDG 241, uh, like the one we are having now. Um, apart from this, we have already conducted We lost you again. Hello. I'm sorry, my internet connection is very unstable. No problem. Can so, you yes, hear me again. now? Yes. And can you see my screen? Yes, yes. So I was saying that we have conducted uh, three virtual trainings already in 2021. Um, this is the fourth one. Um, we are going to conduct two other, you know, between now and the end of the year. We have translated all documents included. Um, we have to translate all the documents, including e-learning into all six official UN languages. And we are to develop digital lectures on SG241 web page, which, which will be uploaded to, to the website. And now from country data collection and uh, reporting perspective, we have um, you know, developed the FAO data collection questionnaire as well as the reporting protocols. Um, Stefania will have a dedicated presentation on on how countries uh, will go about reporting on SG 241 to FAO. So uh, if you have any question related to the reporting part, uh, please wait until that presentation as most of your questions that you may have in your mind right now will, will, got, will get clarified during that presentation. So this FAO data collection questionnaire was tested in 45 countries. Soon after us uh, testing and revising the questionnaire, we conducted uh, or carried out a comprehensive dispatch or a global dispatch in August 2020. We then carried out data collection analysis, gap filling, quality assurance, and quality control processes. We um, drafted um, um, the report. Um, we are yet to share it with UNSG because uh, if you remember, the SEG 241 has a three years data collection cycle. So we are due for reporting to UNSD in 2022. So um, we will carry out another round of data collection this year. And after that, we will prepare a report that will be submitted to um, UNSD, United Nations Statistical Division. So currently we are in preparation of, uh, of and dispatch to countries that will happen uh, hopefully towards the beginning, end of July and beginning of uh, August. From June, uh, July to November, we will carry out again the same uh, steps that is data collection analysis, gap filling, quality assurance and quality control. And by December, 2021, we will draft analysis for finalization um, to UNSG reporting conditional if we have received sufficient, uh, you know, uh, data points uh, uh, or condition if sufficient countries have reported data to FAO on SC241. Now the reporting expectation for 241, um, you know, we, we didn't expect much. Um, you know, the, we received low response rate, which was both expected expected an indica indicative showing the complexity of the indicator and the lack of data. Um, in the short term, um, we uh, expect country to be reporting even uh, using a partial dashboard. So if they, if they report to us, not all the 11, but at least one or two of the sub indicator, even that is a good starting point. Um, in the medium to long, Long term, as I mentioned earlier, we are in process of developing the guidelines around the use of alternative data sources 
as a practical solution to enable and improve reporting on SG241. And in parallel, we are doing continuous outreach and capacity development support to countries in close coordination and collaboration with the 50 by 2030 initiative uh, to collect and analyze detailed farm level data for SE241 monitoring. Uh, here is again the, the matrix which I showed you earlier on alternative data sources. So I'm not gonna go through this. Um, the challenges associated with the use of alternative data sources, we discussed that as well in detail in my previous presentation. So I will skip this slide. And the consideration before countries can use alternative data sources, this was also covered as part of the previous presentation. So I'm not gonna cover this one. And then some information on the use of alternative data sources as to when these uh, uh, guidelines will be ready. Our expectation is to have uh, at least draft uh, version of the guidelines prepared by December, 2021. Um, uh, so, so that is that is the, the that is the aim. Um, if not, then hopefully we will have these guidelines prepared in the first or the second quarter of 2022. Of course, you know, keep in mind that the COVID situation has impacted um, not only the data collection work, but as well as the capacity development and the methodological work, um, um, uh, because uh, the pandemic has inhibited international travel. And because of that uh, reason, we are, we are facing challenges in executing uh, different activities. So I will stop here. Uh, you know, this was uh, just to um, uh, give you um, a holistic overview of the indicator 241. Mind you, again, I mean, we will go into the actual practical details of uh, the indicator framework as to how we go about, uh, you know, um, collecting data and analyzing it to construct the elements of indicator tomorrow. So if you have any question related to, to, to the slide that I just covered, I'm happy to take those. In the meantime, uh, switch, if you want, of course, please switch on the camera. So that we can attach the picture to the, to the report. How many people still you have, Aspandar? I have four pending. Okay, no, so that's the problem. So uh, it goes quickly to promote as panelists, but then it takes time to really have the people promoted actually. Oh, okay. So that, that's the, what I would say, but still anyway, we are very close to have everybody Okay, two people. So perhaps, uh, Stefania, while the participants are getting promoted, you may want to say a few things about uh, tomorrow. 
I mean, like, you know, the timing yeah, sure. and everything. Yes. So, so today, yeah, yeah, let me start. Okay, so today we have seen uh, uh, the theoretical part. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the training, so the first day was, uh, uh, I mean, was about the uh, concentrated on what the 241 actually is. So as Pandyar introduced uh, quite a lot of concepts. So from tomorrow, we have our colleague who is now present, so you can already see him, Gianluigi Nico. That is the uh, guy who will present uh, uh, the exercises and the calculation on theta. So we will really put everything in practice and uh, uh, we will not talk about all the theory, but we will, uh, we will really play with, the, with your data, with the pilot uh, uh, test data that you have collected. So we will start sharp as today. So please uh, uh, join the training a uh, uh, few minutes before because uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of on the agenda also tomorrow, and we will try to to finish sharp as we did today. So please connect a few minutes before. If you have any problem, of course, you just write me as you did today. So we solved uh, uh, an issue. So I don't know why I have two people that are pending. Uh, Aswandia, do you see also two people that are still attendees and cannot be promoted? Yes, I still see them. I don't know why, but in the meantime, maybe I can take, so Aswandia, you are the only one that I see with the camera off. So if you switch on your camera, uh, yeah. So let me take the first picture for the first uh, um, page. So smile. <laughs> okay, so let's see if to this. Okay, let me. Okay, I see some people that have the camera off. Maybe they don't want to have the, the camera on. So not a problem, but just for information, I'm going to take another picture for the second, the second page of my screen, of course. And still I have these two people, unfortunately blocked. We can, I think, you know, we can take, you know, another photograph later on, you know, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, as, you know, the sessions progresses. No yes. problem. Just, you know, let us, you know, if there is a problem. Or I think, I, I don't know if, uh, is it possible to just, you know, keep all of them in the panel list so that, you know, this interaction is more flexible or you have some other, you know, policies to divide the participants, the participants into two panel list or attendees. Mm. Yes, we, I mean, we prefer to have this uh, the webinar mode just for, uh, um, I mean, for easily managing the, the, the people that would like to talk. Because sometimes, I mean, we have a lot of noises in the background, but right. for sure, I mean, if you, I mean, since this webinar actually is not so, uh, I mean, we don't have so many people because you are only 25. We are usually, of course, having many other people. We can have, a more, um, I mean, we can have all of them promoted as panelists, so not a problem. So tomorrow, maybe we can take another picture all together. And uh, these two people, unfortunately, that are blocked there will be visible as well. So uh, in the meantime, anyway, I took the, the two pictures for the two pages that uh, are present. There are only 20, 20 participants, we can you know, all of them. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay, so uh, again, thank you and see you, see you tomorrow uh, sharp. Have a, nice, have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, see you tomorrow. And dear participants, please in the join in the same exact time so that we do any time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, bye. Bye for today. Bye, thank you. Thank you.